CPR stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Um, CPR is very important when someone goes down and they are a cardiac arrest. Um, you can suffer brain damage in the first uh, five to seven minutes, um, which is non-reversible brain damage. So it's very important for citizens to know CPR and that CPR gets started right away. We're going to do a, a brief demonstration on what CPR is and which uh, Captain Triplett explained was cardiopulmonary resuscitation, which is basically manual um, chest compressions and respiratory for somebody that's gone into a sudden cardiac event. What we have here is a uh, CPR mannequin. It's a training mannequin. Um, we're just as my partner, firefighter DeAndre Richardson. We're just going to briefly show what to do with uh, someone down in a sudden cardiac event. Um, he's first going to come up, assess the patient, find out Hello? that he's, does he respond? Um, is he breathing? Is he checking for a pulse? Uh, then we're going to head and where he's going to actually do, this is uh, manual compressions. So he's going to press down about an inch, inch, I'm sorry, about an inch and a half on the chest. Um, he's going to do about two minute cycles and we're going to try and get in about 100 compressions to 120 compressions in a minute. If we had a two person here um, for CPR, the person up here at the head would be administering our artificial respirations at about two breaths every 30 compressions. So in this case, um, if, like Master Firefighter Doug Russell here said, if you had two people doing compressions um, or doing CPR, you have one person doing compressions, what I just um, demonstrated here, and uh, you have another person doing ventilations. Uh, in a lot of cases, you may just be by yourself, so you want to do your compressions. Uh, the most important thing when you're going to uh, give a breath, you want to make sure you have a head, the head is tilt, chin is lifted. That way you can get as much air into the airway as possible. And um, when you give your compression, just breathe into the mouth. And of course, my lips would touch the lips of the person. And you're looking for a chest rise here. You're going to give two of those and then you're going to go back to compressions. So this can either be done mouth-to-mouth, uh, -mouth, as it was explained earlier. Um, if you have a pocket mask, if you're afraid to do mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, you can use a pocket mask. And firefighters, rescuers would have what's called a bag valve mask to apply ventilations. So about every 30 compressions, we would go ahead and administer two breaths. If they're uncomfortable with doing mouth-to-mouth, -mouth, it's still good to get someone to do chest compressions right away, and that, and they can just need to go as long as they can go, and if they can get someone else who knows CPR to get them involved, and maybe they can switch out every two minutes, do compressions until you, obviously a fire truck or an ambulance or a medic unit arrives to assist them. And then we are trained in doing chest compressions and then also doing ventilation. But again, the most important thing is, is chest compressions. While that's happening, and if you're in a public place, hopefully somebody has ran and got an AED. Okay, this is what's called an automatic external defibrillator or an AED. Uh, basically, think of it as, um, is a device that'll deliver an external shock across the heart. Uh, briefly, the heart is um, run on electrical impulses through the brain. That basically is what causes the heart to beat. So when during uh, cardiac arrest or uh, I guess a rhythm where it be like ventricular fibrillation or ventricular um, arrhythmia, it would the heart would stop or just kind of quiver, the AED would actually deliver a heart, uh, shock across the heart and hopefully disrupt that and then allow the normal um, rhythm to start back up on the heart again. Most of these are found in shopping malls, uh, pool areas, gyms, uh, 
Um, they're, so they're starting to be pretty common in schools and probably in any public area, airlines carrying them and things like that. So if you see one of these, um, definitely grab them and uh, you can use this during your CPR. This has a, uh, um, a battery, an internal battery on here that carries a charge. What we do is they have what are called um, fast patches or quick combo patches that should be in there. We, I won't do it, but we'll tear the bag open. Um, this gets actually plugged into the AED here, and these patches, one goes down on the lower left, and the other one comes up here on the top right. And all you do is you just turn it on. Connect electrodes. It'll, it, it actually will talk to you. It'll say, tell you what to do, connect the electrodes. It'll show it to you on the screen. It's probably Connect a little hard to see. Um, I've been in the fire service for 30 years. I've been with Montgomery County for 17 and a half. So I've seen a lot of changes over the years. Um, I remember when I started CPR years ago in the training, uh, mostly it was, everybody remembers ABC, airway breathing circulation or airway breathing compressions. Um, now it's all changed to what's called CAB, C-A-B, so it's reversed, it's compressions, airway, and now breathing. So basically, uh, compressions are the biggest thing we want to stress in all this. Um, the two minutes of just non-stop compressions, don't stop, push hard, push fast, try to hit around 100, 130 uh, compressions a minute if you can, and that's the biggest thing we're stressing right now. To find a CPR class in your community, contact the American Heart Association or the American Red Cross. Yeah.